The cradle of the Protestant Reformation is a town on the River Elbe, halfway between Leipzig and Berlin. The painter Lucas Cranach came here in 1505, the theologian Martin Luther in 1508, and the philosopher Philip Melanchthon in 1518. Much later, Wittenberg became the center of the German chemicals industry. But it remained a small town, and since 1922 it has officially been known as Lutherstadt Wittenberg, Luther's town. It's very inspiring that lots of people with religious beliefs come here. For them, this place is very special. And we keep learning from them how special this place is. Not just the church, but also the town that has shaped and influenced so much history. It's very exciting to experience it again and again, especially now that we're restoring the church for the Reformation anniversary in 2017. This is a very exciting time. The city church is the oldest building in Wittenberg. Martin Luther preached here 500 years ago. Now the church is facing change. And so is the whole of Wittenberg. Das habt ihr ja noch so gemacht, dass man jetzt äh, die Struktur noch erkennen kann. Genau, genau. Einmal, einmal dünn. Aber so, also jetzt hier noch. The major anniversary is fast approaching. In 2017, it will be 500 years since Luther formulated his famous Reformation theses. Protestants throughout the world will be celebrating this occasion, and hundreds of thousands are expected to visit Wittenberg. The residents of this small town are already used to pilgrims and tourists, especially in the summer, most of them from the United States and Asia. We are come from the Korea, South Korea. Uh, we are met with this church. Uh, we uh, journey to the Re Reformation uh, for religious. Uh, we we are gonna be a uh, uh, real Christian uh, for. Uh, that's why we come here and we look around the Luther's uh, uh, doing and life and his sermon, we uh, memorize everything. The visitors are incredibly varied, not just in their countries of origin, but also in their interests. Since I've been here, I've learned a lot about how Luther himself and the history of the Reformation plays a role in various cultures, how it's woven into a very wide variety of national traditions. Martin Luther spent 27 years in Wittenberg, first as an Augustinian monk, and then after leaving the Catholic Church with his wife, Katharina. Their former home is now a museum. A highlight for most pilgrims is Luther's study. This is where the great reformer received his closest friends. And this is where he held his famous informal speeches, the Tischreden. In the early 16th century, the town on the Elbe had only 2,000 residents. But foreign students boosted its population to almost double that number. Wittenberg was a provincial backwater. 
but it had an internationally renowned university with famous teachers. Wittenberg was a little town that achieved international prominence 500 years ago. The university appointed a young professor in 1508 who changed the world by the word alone, with knowledge, not with power, by the power of the word and not by the command of the powerful. That tradition endured for hundreds of years and shaped the town. If you enter the town's main church and stand in front of the Kranach altar, you feel the breath of history as something very much alive. Lucas Cranach the Elder was probably the most important German painter of the Renaissance. He was an apothecary by trade and mayor of Wittenberg. In this famous altarpiece, he introduces the Protestant reformers into the biblical scenes. At the Last Supper, the man with the light-colored goblet is Martin Luther, masquerading as Junker Jörg, a disguise Luther used in Wartburg Castle to hide from the Inquisition. John the Baptist is Luther's companion, Philip Mellington, the man with the white beard, Cranach himself. The image we have of Luther is largely based on Cranach's portraits, although the historical Luther was a man with many facets, theologian, politician and poet. The older residents of Wittenberg remember the communist era in which Martin Luther wasn't exactly ignored, but was revered as the man who created German as a written language. The communists also honored him as a revolutionary, but they ignored him as a theologian. He should, however, be viewed in the total context, as a theologian and a politician and as a man of letters. Everyone can discover something of interest in Luther. Today, Wittenberg has a population of nearly 50,000. But only a fraction of that number live in the old town. Most reside in the surrounding conurbation. Luther and Mellington are commemorated on the town square and their former homes are UNESCO World Heritage Sites along with the historic churches. Eighty million euros has been invested in renovating the historic center since German reunification two and a half decades ago. And another 80 million will follow in the next three years. It's a World Heritage Site that has influenced every aspect of society. That's why it's being so intensively restored for 2017. If you invite guests, you spruce up your home, and we're doing that on a big scale. We're restoring both the important churches and we're supporting the presentation of Luther's legacy by creating exhibition rooms linked to a new definition of content. That's a new point of orientation that will extend beyond the anniversary year itself. The state government of Saxony-Anhalt, Germany's federal government and the European Union are all helping shoulder the costs. It's a bonanza for this small German town, but then its international significance is unique. We had some Maoris visiting from New Zealand and we spoke English. When I showed them around, they kept saying that they could hardly believe it was real. They were Protestants, and for them, Wittenberg was the cradle of the Protestant faith that they professed. It was like somewhere in heaven. They could hardly believe it really existed on earth. This is also Wittenberg, the Pisteritz nitrogen plant, Germany's largest fertilizer manufacturer.
In 1915, an enormous chemicals plant was built in the Wittenberg district of Pisteritz. The tradition of high-tech chemicals production continued even during the communist era, and does so today. I graduated in 1973 and wasn't sure what to do next. Then a brand new fertilizer factory was constructed in Wittenberg, and I ended up working here like a lot of other graduates. We were a very young team. We grew up with the plant, and the plant grew up with us. A few minutes away lies the Pisteritz housing estate. It sprang up between 1915 and 1920, modern accommodation for the workers. The slogan was, chemistry produces bread, prosperity, beauty. And in the communist era, everyone who lived here was employed at the nitrogen plant. It was almost a family tradition. My dad worked here and so did I. So did my aunt and my cousins. We all worked at the plant and lived on the estate. It was a very nice setup. Everyone got on well together. We were friends, and that had an influence on the children. We played together. It was great fun, with lots happening. <laughs> the architects planned it as a green area. Each house had its own garden. And even a bathroom, which was very rare in a working-class district a hundred years ago. During the communist era, the district became run down. But it was completely renovated after German reunification and is now a fashionable neighborhood, and not just with chemical workers. I'm a chemical engineer myself. I've spent a good deal of my working life in the sector. I was elected mayor after reunification. Then I asked myself, what is this town really? Is it only a chemicals site? A choir is rehearsing in the castle church. The singers are amateurs. Some of them haven't lived in Wittenberg very long. As in Luther's day, the town still attracts lots of foreigners. The choir mistress was born in America. It's a big world and a small town. Everybody's welcome here. Wittenberg is important historically. But it's also a completely normal town, where families live and people work. And a lot of things happen here that have nothing to do with Luther. Amy Taylor only arrived a few days ago. She's working at the Lutheran primary school for a few weeks. The 23-year-old American is here as a foreign exchange student. More than a thousand students from all over the world come and study in Wittenberg each year. Many of them bring their lecturers and curricula with them. I'm here um, doing my student teaching. I go to Concordia University in St. Paul, and I'm in the teacher education program there, and I'm in my senior year. And my major is teaching English as a second language, so uh, I had the opportunity to come here and teach English. My university wants to build a partnership with um, Lutherstadt uh, Wittenberg. Education is topping the agenda once again in Wittenberg. In 1994, the Leukeria Foundation took over the premises of the former Leukeria University. With projects such as the student exchange program, it's re-establishing academic life in the town. 
The organizers look back with nostalgia on Wittenberg's past glory 500 years ago, when the university attracted academics from all over Europe. Das Wittenberg, Luther und Reformation. Wittenberg has become synonymous with Luther and the Reformation, mainly because the great communicator Luther spread his ideas from his chair at the university. Luther was a university professor, which is often overlooked. That's how he earned his living. And he was also a prolific writer and a first-class journalist. That's why there were printers here. And those are the two aspects that made the town world famous, the university and the Wittenberg imprint on the title page of publications. The end of Wittenberg's glorious past also has a precise date. The town fell to the Prussian army in 1817. The Prussian king, Friedrich Wilhelm III, closed the university and turned its buildings into barracks for his troops. Bernhard Naumann is the sexton at Wittenberg's main church and an enthusiastic Luther impersonator. He has welcomed state premiers, prime ministers and presidents to the town. He's much in demand in this role. I think Martin Luther is the most popular figure in German history. Whether he was the most important, I would let others decide. But he's somebody you could imagine having a beer with. And you can't really imagine doing that with Goethe or the kings and emperors who had a decisive influence on German history. Bernhard Naumann guides lots of visitors through the town. And they all love his tours. He knows all of Luther's colorful expressions. Mayor Eckhard Naumann and his assistant Arne Lietz are inspecting the construction work on the town's new shopping centre. For most Wittenberg residents, this building site is probably more important than all the town's museums. There's also construction going on in front of the shopping centre. In fact, almost everywhere. The urban infrastructure is being renewed, roadworks are in progress, and even a new train station is being built. All before 2017. The new Wittenberg Centre is being constructed here, incorporating the armory. That's where there will be a new exhibition of the town's historical collections. That's the new Arsenal shopping center, and here there'll be an ensemble of four buildings. One of them, the old Franciscan monastery, will be the town's reception center, the main office for welcoming tourists. Then we have the city archives and civic center, with a hall that can seat 600 for conferences and meetings. And on the square itself, the market will probably be held again, so that life returns to the area which has long been dead. Sometimes when we came out in the morning and the nitrogen plant had emitted some toxins during the night, there was a coating on the pavement and you could see your footprints. It was mostly soot. That was a problem, so it was a huge relief when it was all reconstructed.
Before reunification, we had more than 8,000 workers here. Then that number suddenly shrank to just 700. Not only our own workers were out of a job, but people who worked for all the other firms in the area. Now we've become an important economic factor once again, not just for Wittenberg, but for the whole region. We're no longer the largest employer, but I think I can say with pride, we're one of the largest taxpayers. Another 30 firms are cooperating with the Pisteritz Chemicals Company in a joint project called the Agrochemical Park. The plan is to ensure Wittenberg's economic future beyond 2017. There was an attempt during the communist era to rename Luther's town. The atheists wanted to call it the chemicals town Wittenberg, but the residents resisted. You certainly can't play off chemistry against Luther. You have to acknowledge that they belong together. Luther is identity. The chemicals industry is an opportunity to make a living. Very few people in Wittenberg can make a living from Luther, which is not to say that he's not decisively significant for the town's self-image. To come here and witness the door, to, to walk through the door. I walked through the door a couple of Sundays ago that Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses to the door. My host mom said, you're walking through the door right now. The highlight of every visit to Wittenberg is the door of the castle church, where, according to legend, Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses condemning the sale of indulgences on the 31st of October, 1517. The original castle church was severely damaged in the 18th century and again in the 19th. The brass door that commemorates Luther's protest only dates from 1858. Historians disagree about whether Luther really published his theses here, but it's a powerful symbol. I'm 68 and I've lived in Wittenberg for 34 years, precisely half my life. You always have to take another look at the young Luther. Then you'll see what dynamite is there. Every great idea has a surfeit of the unattained. And while everything's being beautifully renovated here, I have to think of the hymn that says, gleaming beautifully on the outside. It's important that something inward happens and that everything doesn't just gleam beautifully on the outside for 2017. What message will 2017 have for the residents of Wittenberg? Most of them take a practical view of the changes in their pretty town. Some are irritated by the fuss about Luther. Only one in five belongs to the church. One thing's certain, life will go on beyond 2017. Martin Luther is buried in Wittenberg's castle church, but he never really felt at home in the famous university town, the cradle of the Reformation and the place from which his family came. For him, Wittenberg was probably just a bit too small. Wittenberg is the most important small town in Europe, and I think that's what's interesting, that great and important people were forced to come into contact with ordinary people on the streets here to experience normal, real life, the worries of simple people. 
I think it's good that the Reformation came from a small town. It's good that it was a small town, from which it came, and maybe not a coincidence.